Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is John Kennedy. I'm the council member for District 3 in the city of Pasadena. Normally, we would be at a secure location through in our district somewhere, sharing interesting ideas, providing updates to all of you, really hearing your concerns and providing important feedback and feed forward to you. That is not possible tonight. So I'm in a studio at KPAS, taping remotely, hopefully information that can be useful to you as our community responds to the coronavirus COVID-19 pandemic. We are in a state of emergency as a city and it's going to take all of us working together to get through this. I know we can do this if we stick together, practice social distancing between six and 12 feet apart. If we use facial coverings like the one I have here in my hand, either one that you purchase online or is provided to you by some other mechanism, or possibly you'll make one, as was the case of a friend who gave me this one, a friend by the name of Ann Hamilton, or maybe you'll get a little fancier, and another friend by the name of Kathy Luna provided me this particular one that can go with your dress or your business suit as you stay at home. So, just want to say that I, as your council member, am intimately involved in the response to the COVID-19 state of emergency in the city of Pasadena. And tonight, we'll be sharing information from various sectors in city government to doing our best, doing our best to ensure that you are safe, and healthy through this crisis. Let me take this opportunity to introduce you to Acting Fire Chief Brian Frieders. He is a leader across the nation as it relates to health issues, particularly employment-related cancers. So tonight I've invited Acting Fire Chief Brian Frieders to share with you from his perspective what we need to do to stay safe in Pasadena. Please welcome Acting Fire Chief Brian Frieders. Good afternoon, my name is Brian Frieders and I'm the Interim Fire Chief for the Pasadena Fire Department. First of all, I wanna say thanks to our community who's been incredibly compliant with the health orders that have been issued by not only the state and the local health departments, uh, but also by our national uh, governance. So uh, I first want to say thank you very much for the citizens of Pasadena to really embracing and understanding the importance of social distancing, for wearing masks, and only doing things that are essential. I want to make sure that you know that the fire department is working strongly, that there has been absolutely no interruption of service whatsoever. We're doing everything we can to make sure that you're safe and you're protected. We're still responding to calls. We're still managing all the things the fire department's responsible for. What's really reassuring for me as the interim fire chief is that the city manager all the way to the librarian and all of the executive staff, every single day we meet and talk and discuss and are working very well to make sure the community is safe and that we're doing everything possible to make sure we try to stop this coronavirus outbreak. I'm very pleased with the response, not only of the citizens, but also my colleagues in the fire department. We have very high performing people in the fire department and they're, ex they're an exemplary group of folks that are doing outstanding work every single day for you. And as I said before, the way you can help us is stay home. I know it's difficult for all of us to be at home for a long period of time, but understand that is the single most beneficial way for us to stop the spread of the coronavirus. Make sure you're washing your hands. Make sure if you're gonna be around someone or within six feet of someone, that you wear that mask. Even though there's a whole bunch of science talking about whether it's on a, uh, whether it lives on a surface, whether it's on your groceries, who cares? What we wanna make sure is that you're protected. Wear your mask, wash your hands, don't touch your face. Enjoy the outdoors if you have to, but do it by yourself. Walk around your neighborhood. 
Don't go to parks, don't go to trails. Go enjoy the outside, get some fresh air. That's a very healthy thing for you to do. But make sure you wear your mask, make sure you keep that social distancing, and make sure you understand the importance of staying at home. Thank you very much. Have a great day. Be safe. I always like to introduce a little levity when I'm sharing with my constituents, my neighbors, my friends. But tonight, it's a little difficult because of the seriousness of the coronavirus COVID-19 pandemic. I, for one, have lost two friends during the pandemic that I know of, one in Richmond, Virginia, and one in upstate New York. Thank God, not here in the city of Pasadena, although we have had several deaths of local residents. My heart goes out to those who have lost loved ones during this pandemic. I believe there is light at the end of the tunnel. And if we stick together, abide by the safety regulations that are shared from the city manager, Steve Mermel, our director of Pasadena Public Health Department, Dr. Ying Ying Go, and other professionals from the World Health Organization and the Community Center for Community Disease Control in Atlanta, I think we will get through this issue. I think we will get through this crisis, this pandemic. I would like to invite Police Chief John Perez to share with us just how we can stay safe during this crisis. Please welcome Police Chief John Perez. Thank you, Council Member Kennedy, for the opportunity to address the community in this forum. Uh, this is much different than we've ever seen or done before when we come to community meetings. I do realize it's a great inconvenience for our community, our public, and what we're going through with COVID-19. However, we are really uh, having an evolution in our lifetimes of what's going on in our communities. And so I appreciate the opportunity to, to speak for a moment as to what the police department is doing and how we could better connect. Um, I will say that, I'll, um, that I have to be uh, very upfront with everybody and honest when I say that uh, there's still concern about the exposure rates. As we talked to Dr. Go of the health department and others in our community at Huntington Memorial Hospitals, uh, great things are happening in regards to likely lowering the exposure rate as we look at the flattening of the curve. However, uh, we don't feel that, we don't see that with the concerns of the uh, of being exposed, uh, but it's going to require everybody to continue to uh, push forward and we highly appreciate the cooperation uh, that we've gotten from the community and it's, it's been fantastic at the recept the receptive nature of our uh, residents, our business owners, and many other people in which they are reaching out to us. But we're seeing a lot of people masking out with the cloth masks as you see uh, me wearing today and all our police officers. Uh, and I, and, um, but we just highly appreciate uh, the health department, the cooperation from the fire department is doing a fantastic job. Uh, as well from our city government, council members, and the guidance that I'm receiving from city manager Steve Mermel to give me the environment to lead my organization. As it gets to my organization, I can tell you that our employees are doing a fantastic job. Our police officers every single day are changing many of their protocols, many of the uh, challenges that we have. They're finding solutions and we are talking as a team to make sure we're as safe as we can be for ourselves and for the community as well. Uh, many of our protocols have changed. If you've called the dispatch center lately, we're gonna ask uh, an additional number of questions um, that makes it safe for yourself and for the police officers. And that's been very, very helpful in our responses. Uh, police officers are very visible. We initially saw a drop in crime by over 30%. However, we're concerned about what can happen into the future. But for now, we have a very strong deployment plan. We're very visible in our community. We continue to reach out to our community by telephone. We are ho uh, holding Zoom uh, conferences with many of our committees, the Chiefs Advisory and others, to make sure we are communicating. The regular emails still work. My phone calls are still coming in along with texting, so that works for us as well. So we are listening to our community. We are getting to a point where we are understanding how to respond as a community to this. This is an all-hands uh, call for everybody in our community, and we are doing a fantastic job. 
And so what I do want to talk about is the importance as we push forward. Regardless if we hear that the flattening of the curve is occurring rapidly or not, it's going to be very important at some point when a decision is made to lift the health order. It's going to be very important for us as a community to ensure that even after the health order may be lifted in the next couple of months or longer or shorter, who knows what that period may be, but that we are able to maintain many of our uh, prevention models that we have to ensure that practice and social distancing, washing our hands every hour, and making sure that we're aware of hot spots in our community, such as supermarkets, parks, and even our um, skilled nursing facilities that we are approaching it very, very carefully, that we understand for all of us, if you are sick, and you do have the regular flu or cold coming on, we learn to stay home. We learn not to come to work and save those sick days for the sunny day when we usually call in sick and take a walk. We're gonna have to start using our sick days for the real reasons we were provided this benefit. Um, and so it's gonna be important for us as a community to get ready for the new future that's coming. Um, this is a, a, a wake up call for us. And what we could do as a community when we look at prevention methods, methods into our budgeting platforms, into our community initiatives, and what we can do for our homeless population, and that it's going to require us to really think as a community together. We are already thinking at the police department and planning for the future when the health order is lifted and how we're going to look as a police department and how we're going to maintain many of our prevention methods that we put in place during this COVID period. So it's going to be very important for us to remember that, not to forget this period of time, to ensure we're ready for what might come at us in the future, but at the same time, collectively as a community, we're coming together, we're having the conversations, and every single day, if things need to be fixed, adjusted, or re redesigned in some way, we will do it. Uh, innovation is part of getting through this. Teamwork, communication, and really working together to make sure that we're, we're really talking about the most difficult aspects of COVID and the pandemic and what we need. And with that, I do wanna take a moment to talk about crime and crime prevention. Uh, we do have to be aware that there's opportunities out there that will still um, want to commit crime. So if you see something, say something. Whether it's a vehicle burglary, people acting suspiciously, or something else that's going on, we do want you to report that to the police department at either 911 or 626-744-4241 number. At the same time, be aware of opportunists who want to try to scam either by telephone or by knocking on your door. There's nothing about COVID-19 that somebody's gonna call you on a telephone from local government um, or any nonprofit that's trying to sell you something or want you to do something that's gonna access it either at the door of your home or over the telephone. So whenever that happens, make sure you hang up on them or in fact tell them to come back another day or that you're gonna call the police if they come to your door trying to sell something. That shouldn't be happening and we haven't had any huge number of complaints. I've heard some of the rumors that have been circulating. None of those are true, obviously. But if you do come across something that's uh, uncomfortable, it doesn't make sense, it's because it, it doesn't make sense and it's likely wrong. So push back and make sure somebody's aware and uh, just keeping you safe. So with that, I wanna thank you all. We'll continue to push forward. We're here for you. Please reach out to us. And again, I wanna thank the council member for giving us this opportunity and I'm wishing everybody well and we'll see you soon out in the community. Thank you. The city of Pasadena is unique. As all of you know, we love the city of Pasadena. What is also special about the city of Pasadena is that we have our own health department Heading the Pasadena Public Health Department is Dr. Ying Ying Go, a professional medical doctor in the field. Please welcome Dr. Ying Ying Go, and she will share with you some of her ideas on how to stay safe during the crisis and the steps that we are taking to keep all of you safe during the crisis. I want to express my gratitude to you for your commitment to keeping yourself and our community healthy. COVID-19 has had extreme impacts on our way of life, our economy, our work, our children, children's education, our social relationships, and our overall wellness, including mental health. We must thank those workers supporting our critical infrastructure, including city staff, who make it possible for most of the communities to stay safer at home. And of course, I give my heartfelt thanks to the healthcare workers and first responders who put themselves at risk every day to take care of us. I also want to express my deepest condolences for those who have lost loved ones to COVID-19. In a community of our size, this international pandemic has rapidly become personal, 
many of us with friends and family who have fallen ill. Among Pasadena residents, we are seeing a daily increase in the number of people with laboratory confirmed COVID-19. This is partly from an increase in testing and also likely reflects an upward trend in actual cases. This is consistent with increases in LA County, the state and the country. The number of Pasadena residents who have died from COVID-19 continues to climb as well. Thus far, mortality has been among individuals 49 years or older and related to work or residence in a long-term care facility or nursing home. However, we have seen laboratory confirmed COVID-19 cases among Pasadenans in all age groups, including under 18. About half of cases have been among people age 60 and younger, and people of a wide range of ages have had illness severe enough to require hospitalization. This illness affects everyone, and with the increases in cases and deaths, we must all continue to stay home. Two additional measures have been taken by the Pasadena Public Health Department, which layer on top of the most important practices we must continue, good hand hygiene and physical distancing. The first additional measure is that essential businesses, such as grocery stores and restaurants that are serving takeout, must now publicly post and implement social distancing protocols that require employees to wear a non-medical cloth face covering when they are interacting with other people and unable to maintain physical distancing. Customers are required to wear cloth face coverings while in the facility, and businesses are also required to take additional steps for customer spacing and disinfection of high-touch surfaces. Of note, this health officer order does not prohibit any individual or family living in the same household from engaging in healthy outdoor activities, such as walking, so long as everyone is able to maintain adequate physical distancing from others, six feet or more. The person exercising outdoors and maintaining physical distancing does not need to wear a face covering. The second additional measure is that long-term care facilities have received a legal order to meet the infection prevention and control practices as directed by public health, such as restricting visitors, requiring temperature and symptom screening of all employees prior to work, and canceling group activities that lead to increased risk of disease transmission. The health department is working with the state licensing agencies for these facilities and with the facilities themselves to protect this population that is particularly at risk for poor outcomes related to COVID-19. Some good news. Current analysis seems to indicate that your efforts to keep yourself healthy by staying home have made a difference in the number of people getting sick from COVID-19 and the number of people requiring hospitalization. We are currently maintaining a level that the healthcare system is able to treat, though there are still problems with limited availability of testing and personal protective equipment. However, analysis also shows that any lifting of stay-at-home measures at this time directly translates into increases in the number of people with COVID-19 which could overwhelm our healthcare system and likely cause worse, worse health and economic impacts. We are actively working with other public health jurisdictions and state and federal agencies to look ahead to the coming months. The state public health department in coordination with local health departments has developed an initial framework that describes what indicators can help us decide the next steps. Some of these indicators include greatly increased testing and contact tracing capability, improved ability to keep the most vulnerable population safe, and the development of effective therapies and vaccines. While it is currently too soon to lift the Safer at Home order, we are planning for the time in the future when we will be able to resume many of the activities that are necessary for a thriving community, recognizing that we may need to do so in a modified fashion. That time will be dependent on where we are in relation to those indicators I described. I wish you good health and strive to keep you informed with the latest updates. At this time, I would like to welcome the city manager of the city of Pasadena. He will share a little bit about where we are as a community in this state of emergency dealing with the coronavirus, COVID-19. Please welcome city manager, Steve Mermel. Hello, I'm city manager, Steve Mermel. I know this is a difficult period for many of us, but I want you to know that Pasadena City Government is working for you, our residents and our businesses, to support you during this difficult time. And our City Council has already taken steps to support our community. The City Council enacted an eviction moratorium and suspended utility shutoffs and late fees. Importantly, the City Council also approved over $11 million in financial rebates to customers of the Pasadena Water and Power Department. This money will go far to support our residents 
and our business community during these tough times. City Hall remains open to provide city services. Our police and our fire departments are on the front lines to make sure that we stay safe. We're fortunate in Pasadena to have our own public health department and our health director, Dr. Go, and her staff are making sure that we have the most up-to-date information as to what's going on in our location and taking appropriate steps to support the health of our community. Thank you, we will get through all this together. I'd like to take this opportunity to acknowledge the leadership of Mayor Terry Tornick. He has been providing daily briefings on how we are doing in our response to the coronavirus COVID-19 pandemic and our local state of emergency. Please take a look at the following. Hello, Pasadena. I'm your mayor, Terry Tornick. Our Safer at Home regulations are slowing the spread of COVID-19 virus, but the impact on our lives has been awful. Closing schools, businesses, and playgrounds, and asking everyone to stay at home has created economic hardship and disrupted our lives terribly. So it's not surprising that many people are growing impatient and asking when all of this will end. The answer is that we really don't know. These onerous regulations must stay in place until the rate of new infections are drastically reduced or there are some proven medical treatments. Believe me, we all want to return to normal as soon as it's safe. Until then, please continue to stay at home and maintain your distance when you have to go out and wear masks when you go shopping. For information updates, go to the city's website, cityofpasadena.net. Thanks for listening. Stay safe. The City Council of the City of Pasadena wants to do everything within its power to ensure that we respond in a manner to limit the possibility of loss of life. To that end, the City Council is meeting remotely to deal with policy, ergo life safety and financial issues. We are providing directives to the City Manager and direct reports, the City Attorney and the City Clerk. We have begun the process to equip the Pasadena Civic Center as an overflow facility to support the work of Huntington Memorial Hospital. Huntington Memorial Hospital's leadership is on the front lines in helping us fight and overcome COVID-19. My team is conducting wellness checks on our seniors in District 3. We are augmenting what the City Council has done to give nonprofit organizations with cash awards to provide food to those in need. For the past three weeks, my office has been delivering boxed meals to seniors, which may provide sustenance for up to two weeks. We have secured a donation of 6,000 face, facial masks or face coverings for the city of Pasadena to provide to our first responders or essential personnel. We have sent out briefings to our constituencies in English, Spanish, Chinese, Korean, and French. We've done our very best to cover a wide spectrum in the dissemination of information. While the city has limited options, we have enacted eviction protection for residential tenants and subsequently extended such protection to businesses. Industry-specific resource information was provided to businesses and provided support for local independent restaurants through the City of Pasadena website. Ladies and gentlemen, we know that this is a very difficult time economically for every resident in the city of Pasadena. The policymakers, the city council, has grappled with what can we do to provide a local economic stimulus 
And what staff and the city council has developed is a way in which we can provide some relief, and that is the suspension of the collection of the underground surtax for six months and providing up to a two-year rebate of funds collected to all electric customers. We expect as early as two weeks from April 20th that checks could begin to be found in your mailboxes. Some 67,500 residential and business electric comp customers will benefit from this rebate. Yes, we know that this is a small way of helping to stimulate our economy, but it's one of the best ways that we could quickly develop in order to make sure that the economic downturn is not too difficult for our residents and business electric customers. So look forward to receiving a rebate soon. We have covered a lot of ground tonight. I know that it is not everything that you would like answered because the format tonight was not inviting questions from you. That will change soon where we'll have a more interactive engagement. I hope that will be coming very soon. I want to hear from you nevertheless. It would be rare that any elected leader would provide their cell number, but this is an unprecedented time and we need answers. And I, as your council member in District 3, want you to be able to contact me through this state of emergency, coronavirus, COVID-19 pandemic. And so tonight I'd like to provide you with my cell number. It is 818-400-1488. And I believe the number will shortly appear on the screen. Again, my cell number is 818-400-1488. In closing this particular interaction, I would simply like to thank our city manager, Steve Mermel, our acting fire chief, Brian Frieders, our chief of police, John Perez, director of our Pasadena Public Health Department, Dr. Ying Ying Go. And equally, I'd like to give support to the head of our government, Mayor Terry Tornick, for really serving in a leadership role when we need him there most and providing information that seeks to keep our community informed and safe. So tonight, to all of my constituents, neighbors, and friends, safer at home, use the telephone to stay in touch with family and friends, share that love telephonically, be safe, and we as a community looking out for one another will get through this very difficult time. I wish you only the very best. Stay safe and stay healthy. God bless you one and God bless you all. Good night.